God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one uh, the second part of my dream dated 6-28. And so in this dream, after after the scenario about the husband and the wife and the kids wearing the shield in their hand, I actually went out of that house. So as I went out, I looked at the sky and there you go. I saw this huge cube in the sky, but it was like covered with cloth it was like if this is a uh, if this is a full square the whole thing if you see a cube the whole thing was beautifully covered it was covered what uh with a cloth it's like a bed you know when you have a bed sheet it's totally covered with the cloth perfectly but at the bottom of this cube there was like a zipper it was unzipped and so if this is the cube i can see the zipper here and it was open so it is revealing what is inside this cube that was covered with uh with cloth so i saw gold underneath and so i was just so excited i was because i was with my dad in that dream i was telling my dad you know sometimes i think probably this is one way the lord is teaching him maybe i was really transported in spirit and i was teaching my father about the words of god so anyway, I was telling my dad in this dream, I said, Daddy, this is what God is telling us, that the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven. And so, you know, I was so excited because for so long, I've been asking the Lord, Lord, you brought me there to heaven. You're showing me a lot of things. I want to see the, the street of gold. And I haven't had a dream anything about that. And this is the only time he showed me that the, if this is the square, right? If this is the cube and another layered here. So when the zipper was open, it was open like this, you know, it was open and this was revealed and I can see the gold. So I know it was the street of gold. So I was telling him, this is what God is saying. And so as I was telling him and there's another person in there, I look back again in the sky. So as I look up in the sky, instead of seeing the street of gold in the sky, now I'm seeing like a whole big Bible. The whole big Bible. It was like laid at the bottom of the, you know, at the bottom of this cube, the new uh, Jerusalem. So as I was looking, and then it's funny, brothers and sisters, because as I saw it, I'll show you the dream, uh, the drawing that I did. So this is the, the cube that I saw, right? And then it turns to be, I was looking at the bottom. It is like covering the whole bottom and there's a word Bible. And so it's like, it's like the Bible is covering it. And then all of a sudden it flew away. And I told myself, this is exactly what I said. I said, uh. I, I saw the Bible under it. Then it flew away and I said, Oh, it's going to reveal itself in the different parts of the world so everyone can see. And that's, um, you know, and that's how the part of that ended. Because there's another one which is the explanation is so, so long that the Lord wanted us to, to see and understand. And so anyway, what is the Lord trying to tell us, brothers and sisters? What is this huge cube? the new jerusalem and the huge bible we all know god said there will be signs in the sky that's why we're seeing different sky, uh, signs in the sky and god is going aside to reveal what are the meteors and all those things that are happening he's going to reveal also coming from heaven this it will pass by the sky to reveal to us the new Jerusalem. He said in Revelation 21, he, he was speaking, God is speaking about the new heaven and a new earth. So we have to find out where and how will it come out and what it is for. So in Revelation 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! 
God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Praise be to God. So see, the, the new Jerusalem, look at this one, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her. So as I'm seeing the cube, it's actually covered also with linen. It's beautifully covered as this perfect cube. And so we are just like, you know, this place, the new Jerusalem is actually prepared for us. As the new Jerusalem also is also going to be revealed to us as we bride supposed to be beautifully prepared and dressed for our husband. So that's why the first part of this dream was talking about the husband and the wife. That the wife should always be ready when they wake up in the morning, shower, clean, dress nice. And wear that dress, cloth of salvation, and righteousness. And same with the husband, always put the full armor of God. So that no temptation, no scheme of the devil will be affecting us. Because we're constantly ready. Just like preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ. And the new Jerusalem as it goes down. So this is why we need to be beautifully dressed always for our husband. We need to be always ready for his coming. Then how, then how could we be ready as wives? You know, whether your husband is not working or not, you know, we need to constantly be ready. In fairness, brothers and sisters, this is one thing that I really love from my husband. And he's listening here. It's not just because he's listening, but he is really just so unique that I love him that much. And so anyway, whether, you know, he's sickly, right? So he stays um, in the house, but he drives me, he, you know, he do errands and a lot of stuff. But most of the time, if he's not feeling well, he stays at home. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, I can't remember a time, probably when he was very sick, that he can change clothes. But every day, even if he don't go anywhere, when he wakes up early in the morning, he goes immediately to the shower, take a shower, and he's already ready dressed as if he's going somewhere else. But me, if it's my day off, I usually wake up, sit down, uh, you make my coffee or eat, and I'm still in my jammies. And this is what the Lord is trying to tell us. We need to be constantly, not just physically that we need to show off and dress off in the house, but the Lord wants us to be constantly ready physically and spiritually for His coming. So just like the wife waiting for the husband, we need to be always clean and ready for Him. So brothers and sisters, how could we be ready as wives? We all know that we're going to be marrying our bridegroom, who is Jesus Christ, right? That's why the, the Bible, which will appear and it's going to be flying, to be, to be visiting different parts of the world, the reason is for all of us to be ready for the wedding or the marriage of the Lamb. In Revelation 19 verse 7, the Lord said, Let us rejoice and celebrate and give Him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen she wears is the righteous acts of the saints. Praise be to God. So this cloth that we're wearing is actually the righteous acts of the saint. And so how can we get this righteousness? So you might ask, what am I going to do in order to be righteous? Remember, we just mentioned earlier uh, on the first part of this dream, we mentioned about the book of Isaiah 61 verse 10, that God is going to clothe us with garments of salvation and robe of righteousness once we wear god is giving us the cloth of salvation so if we receive jesus as our lord and our savior 
we are safe. God is going to give us that garment to let us know we are saved because we accepted Him as our Lord and our Savior. You remember that in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. We will have everlasting life because we accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. We believe He died on the cross for our sins. And since we repent from our sins, our sins are wiped out clean and they are remembered no more. And that's our cloth of salvation, believing that God's words are true, that our sins are forgiven, and that we are safe. And so once we believe and having that faith, we are considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord. So that's the reason why, brothers and sisters, if you are saved and born again, don't look back because you are a new creation. God gave you the Holy Spirit to teach you and to grow in order for you to be clean and pure and be ready before Jesus comes. And so when you are walking righteously with the Lord, don't look back and don't go on the sin or do the same sin that you did before over and over. No, we have to move forward and walk righteously, dying on ourselves, but now we are a new creation in Christ, believing that Jesus, because He really does, if we accept and we are born again, He dwells in us. And you will notice the difference, brothers and sisters. Your mentality, your mindset, the way you talk, the way your heart goes, the way you live your life is totally different from what you used to be before. And we always have to retain that faith, continually reading the words of God to fed us with the living water and the bread of life. Because in that way, we're growing with the Lord, learning more about what the Lord is revealing to us in order for us to be perfect in His eyes before He comes. So as we live our life, uh, as we live our life as you know lives as wife in our home we need to be always ready and righteous so how it is said it is righteousness through faith so that faith is very important to each and every one of us brothers and sisters the lord said in romans 3 verse 21 but now apart from the law the righteousness of god has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance, He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. See, before before Jesus came, they're practicing the law, and a lot and a lot are actually falling short. And even in our generations right now, we're still falling short. But that's the reason why Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood in order to pay for those sins. And if we believe in him, that faith, believing in him. As he said and as he promised, that faith saves us and that will be counted as our righteousness. And so, this tells us how important our faith is in Jesus Christ, believing in him as our Lord and our Savior. In Romans 3 verse 30, since there is one God, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. 
So God is revealing to us the salvation of Jews and Gentiles because of faith. Because of faith. So that's why there's no other law or anything but because of faith. We are saved. And so Romans 4 verse 5, the Lord said, However, to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. So having our faith, brothers and sisters, Jesus is credited, you know, the righteousness is credited on us because of Jesus Christ, believing in him. And so in Romans 4.11, and he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then he is the father of all who believe but are not circumcised in order that the righteousness might be credited to them. So remember before, the Jews are requiring the Gentiles, if they believe in Jesus Christ, they're required to be circumcised. But because of that faith, we are like spiritually circumcised in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are the same Jews and Gentiles if we both believe in Jesus Christ. So Romans 4.16, Therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may rest on grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Brothers and sisters, I want you to bear with me because the Lord showed me some computations about how the, the new Jerusalem look like. And to compare it into uh, miles and square foot, and also to compare it as an island or a, a area of a state or something, how big it is. So this is why it is said Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. So if we believe, and that believing is actually our faith, we are saved. And because of God's grace, God's grace to all of us, we will be saved. We are saved. So Romans 9 verse 30, the Lord said, What then will we say that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have ordained it a righteousness that is by faith? It reminded me, brothers and sisters, about the wedding. Remember when uh, we, the, the story in the Bible, the, the master, he's preparing for the wedding of the son, which represents God the Father and Jesus Christ. And then they invited their friends which represents the jewish because jesus is jewish and then a lot of them decline because they're busy doing this they're doing this and they're doing that and so the father actually instructed his servants to go out there on the street and call those people who are not doing anything on the street and invite them to attend the wedding and these people on the street the outsiders are actually the gentiles and those Gentiles who accept Jesus and as their Lord and their Savior, they will be joining the wedding of the Lamb and they are going to be saved, enjoying that supper. And so, uh, in Romans 10 verse 4, the Lord said, Christ is the end of the law in order to bring righteousness to everyone who believes. See, the law already ends because of jesus christ and if we believe in him it's ending the law and we're teaching and learning the new teaching of jesus christ to love one another as we love ourselves to love god above all things to to follow in order for us to show the love to god in jesus christ is to obey is to obey the commandments of jesus christ and then if we obey, we will be loved by the Father and He will love us and He will show Himself to us, reveal Himself to us. Praise be to God. So therefore, since, uh, since the teaching of the Lord is also open to the, the Gentiles, in Romans 10 verse 12, For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and gives rich, richly to all who call on Him. 
Amen and Amen. Praise be to God. See, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So this is why God said He is coming to make everything new. So on verse 5, He said, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then He said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Praise be to God. The Lord said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away, saith the Lord. That is in the book of Matthew. So every word that the Lord said will come into pass. He is true and faithful. That's why the Lord said He is the way, the truth, because everything is true in Him. There's no lie. He will fulfill what He said, and it's going to come into pass. And that's why we Gentiles and Jews, we believe in Him and we trust in His words. And that's our faith in Him, counted us to be righteous because we believe and have faith in every word He said. So what will happen to the obedient and disobedient when God said, it is done? On verse 6, He said, He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral those who practice magic arts the idolaters and all liars they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur this is the second death praise be to god so this is the reason why brothers and sisters you know it just reminded me again about the running water because the lord is trying to tell us to wash ourselves clean and in this part, He is going to give us the water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And now, as I was speaking this, He reminded me again about the running water. See, I know whatever reason that they're doing or whatever reason it will be, I truly believe that the Lord is trying to show even the faucet is closed. It can run water if god permits so and that's why you will wonder why moses even struck the stone on top of the hill or on top of the mountain the stone cracked open and the water gushed forth why because he is god god is god the everlasting god the most powerful god he can just bring up water. He created all things. So he can dry the land if he wants to. He can sprout out waters if he wants to. So he is trying to tell us, brothers and sisters, those who are thirsty with the words of God, he is going to provide us with the living water who is Jesus Christ himself. His words right at this very moment, brothers and sisters, that I've been reading his words. Those words that we hear are actually the living water that we are drinking. And this water will sprout out like a fountain of living water in us. And praise be to God because of God's grace and mercy and love to each and every one of us. And so, we have to remember brothers and sisters, those who disobey the Lord, those who turn their eyes away from the Lord those who turn their back away from the Lord they have eyes to see but they don't see they have ears to hear but they don't hear even the Lord is knocking at their heart reminding them sending them people telling them about God loves them so much all they need to do is believe in Jesus Christ and repent from their sins but a lot of people still turn their back and if they do turn their back, the disobedient will have the punishment. They will be thrown, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Imagine if you look at if you look at the lava in the volcano, it is something like that, brothers and sisters, that you can see the fire on the ground. It's like water that is burning fire. 
and you don't want to be tormented there day and night where worms are there that are not going to die because they will just eating you up they're already you're already dead but you're tormented you're still in pain are you going you know is that self-centeredness of yours greediness of yours to make yourself so pretty and be rich and steal and murder just to have house and lot is that do you think ah uh, really um you know are you really going to to strive to have that in payment of your own soul i don't think so you have to think it brothers and sisters those who disobey i mean those who disobey the lord but for the brothers and sisters they will be given the gift of life by the lord so i believe since we all pass through a certain gates since we are passing by the same a certain gates according to the tribes of israel this i believe that this tribe will also live according to the tribe foundation or they probably have certain i don't know but it was just really amazing brothers and sisters that the area the area the foundations and everything is actually layered in 12 different colors so the lord said in revelation 21 verse 9 the new jerusalem the bride of the lamb one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me come i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god it shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south and three on the west the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb so brothers and sisters imagine this we will be going and living in the city there for the 12 tribes of israel and just like i know a lot of you uh, who are christians you probably watch a lot of videos about that having the foundations of different jewels but listen to this this is what the lord revealed to me do you know the term stadia comes from the uh, the plural of the greek stadion the word for a distance of 185 to 192 meters which is 607 to 630 feet a very similar length is the modern four long or eight of a mile which is 660 feet why am i reading this because when we proceed to the verse 15 of the revelation it says the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city its gates and its walls the city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide he measured the city with the rod and found it to be twelve thousand stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long the angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick the wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure as glass the foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third agate the fourth emerald the, the fifth onyx the sixth ruby the seventh chrysolite the eighth beryl the ninth topaz the tenth turquoise the eleventh jacinth and the twelfth amethyst the twelve gates were twelve pearls each gate made of a single pearl the great street of the city was of gold as pure as transparent glass brothers and sisters do you remember the video i posted before about seeing the new jerusalem coming down but i i didn't see the wall i only see the inside i'm seeing like this two tall very tall building and the whole wall is actually not um not 
what's this not cement but all glass and i'm seeing like a transparent brown clear glass and i was even telling myself oh i wish i can see like blue i said like sky blue of glass wall you know because i'm seeing like a brown brownish goldish kind of uh, uh what's this of wall and it's a tall building like all glass and so the lord said the city was even pure gold and you can see all the walls uh you know the the layer the foundation has different jewels okay this is what the lord told me brothers and sisters and i was so amazed you want us to know the area and how it looks like, right? So do you know when you found an area, it is actually, the area of the cube is actually four squares, right? So when uh, two width times two length. And so the Lord is actually mentioning to us the area, the length, and the width of the, the wall. So the, the length and the width. In order for us to find the whole area, the whole size of the New Jerusalem, yeah, the whole city, is actually to find the area of this, how big is the square, is for us to multiply the length, right? Area is equal to length times width, right? Area times length and width. So what is the length and what is the, the width? The length is 12,000 stadia. And then the width is 12,000 stadia. It means they're both the same length, size, high and uh, down. Okay. So now I googled how big is 12,000 stadia. 12,000 stadia is equivalent to 220, 2,220 kilometers squared. Just bear with me, brothers and sisters, because this one really shocks me, okay? We're looking for the area, right? So the stadia that was given in the Bible is 12,000 stadia by 12,000 stadia. So in order for us to get the complete area of the New Jerusalem is you multiply the length and the width. So 12,000 times 12,000 is actually 4,928,400 kilometers. And so, if we have that 4, mil, 4 million kilometers, if you convert it into miles, the stadia into miles, it's actually, the 12,000 stadia is equivalent to 1,380 miles. So, you multiply that to another 1,380 miles, it's 1,904,400 1, miles. Okay, so, it means the whole area if you flatten the floor is actually 4,928 kilometers which is also 1,904 and 400 miles that's how wide the whole area and that's how wide the wall is so whatever square is in here put that as a square so it means it's so huge not just flat but also so high okay now if you think about the wall that the lord said in revelation it is 144 cubits thick and i praise to god i pray i give the glory and praise to god and i don't want to sin against him in any way so i was researching this one if the wall of the new jerusalem is 144 cubit thick if you convert that into square foot do you know how thick the wall is it's 216 feet. Imagine when you built your house and you wall on your house. Imagine it's even half foot to have the brick on the wall to fence your house. But the wall that um, Jesus and God prepared for the new Jerusalem is 216 feet. It means... It's like look at the two look at the story building. Your house is usually 10 foot. So if you think about that that's how thick it is, right? Your house up and down from the floor to the ceiling that's 10 foot. Make it 216 high. It means 216 floor. And that's how thick the wall is. So the, the enemy can go in. It's really very thick and it's very, very wide. 
And so, when you go to, um, so the street is made of gold. This is what I saw at the bottom of the New Jerusalem. And the cover which is now unzipped is its dress uncovered to be revealed to the people. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. So huge, okay? Let's proceed to verse 22. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its lamp. The Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the love book of life. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, if you try to analyze it, it is so wide and it is so tall. And so, those people, I was even thinking, we are probably going to fly now. And I was even thinking, there's probably layered inside, just like a story building. If it's a cube size, but it imagine how many million stories. So, it means we can stay probably, you know, the others are probably in the bottom. The others will be on the second layer, the third, or we can go everywhere. But one thing I know the throne of god the father is at the very very high part and so i was actually trying to make a research at first i made a wrong computation because i was thinking you know twelve thousand stadia plus uh times twelve thousand stadia instead of multiplying the two i actually multiply it with uh times two only so i end up having the wrong computation so praise god he corrected me so you have to multiply the length and time the weight the weed so it will come out as four million nine hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred now look at this the area of israel is actually only twenty thousand seven hundred seventy in one of the google response on one of the google i researched the the area of israel is twenty thousand five hundred eighty two kilometers okay kilometers squared now, if you think about that, Israel is only 20,000, 700 something. East Jerusalem is, 100, uh, is only 336. The Golan Heights is 1,154. The West Bank is 200 kilometers. It is still not enough. It means when Jesus or God the Father is going to bring the new Jerusalem, that's why there will be new earth and new heaven. It will be so huge, brothers and sisters. It will be flat area that it will be there at the center. And that's it. So, I was trying to Google how big it is compared with the country. In terms of kilometers, okay? If the New Jerusalem is 4 million, 4 million, 928, Brothers and sisters, just correct me if I'm wrong. Just do your computation first. But it really surprised me, just like what I said. So if you multiply the 12,000 stadia the times 12,000 stadia, just like what I said, it's 4,928,400 kilometers. So I actually made a research. Israel size is actually only... 21,640. On some website, it says 2582 kilometers. Others are saying 20, but 20,770. So I made a computation of the different area of the different countries. So in that website, it says that the area of Israel is 21,640 kilometers. We're talking about 4,928,000. So if you add the country of Israel plus the country of India, which is 2,973,190, 
plus the country of Indonesia, which is 1,811,570, plus North Korea, which is 120,410, plus China, which is 1,050, plus Guam, which is 540. That's how big the New Jerusalem size is. Imagine how many countries we describe. Israel, India, Indonesia, <coughs> North Korea, China, Guam. You can even change it. So you can just say, oh, I'll get this to put them all together. But the size, the size of Israel. So that's why sometimes they're fighting that the new Jerusalem will go down in Israel. And that's what I was thinking too. The new Jerusalem will go down in Israel. Now the Lord is leading me to compute the size. If you compute it, it's bigger than Israel. It's like the size of putting Israel, the, the country of India, the Indonesia, North Korea, China, and Guam all together. If you make that as a square, that's how big the New Jerusalem is. And imagine the wall. That's how high the wall is also. Imagine that. And that's why there's a lot of people who will be saved and they will be living there. And the enemy can even go in because I was thinking, imagine how thick. 216 feet thick the wall do you think you know the the during the time of jericho they break the the fence who can break the 216 foot wall imagine that just looking at your ceiling if you cement this thick as your wall nobody can break it even if there's an earthquake how much more 216 stairs right it's like uh, you're riding in an elevator building. It's 216, uh, like a story building. That's how thick it is. And so, if you think about that, brothers and sisters, I don't know if that is included the thickness for the whole area, probably. So, you can just probably remove a little bit in here. But imagine how big is that. So, the Lord said, brothers and sisters, just make your own computation and just make a comment but this is where the lord is leading me when i was just doing like he just opened my eyes and tell me you know find the area of jerusalem and so imagine that that's how many people are going to be rejoicing with the lord so it's not just one story connecting different countries it's actually different heights and so it's so many brothers and sisters so if you think about that so you have to divide now the four million by foot the the kilometer so if you divide the kilometer by foot so you will find out how many story building is it inside i'm sure it's so many brothers and sisters and if it's a cube like it's close so nobody can go in if nobody can go in, it's not going to be dark because the light of the Lord and God and Jesus Christ is actually shining so bright inside. And so nobody can go in anymore inside. And that's why probably the Lord said, you know, people will be knocking on the door to go in. Nobody can go in. You know, the Lord said, depart from me, you who evil doers, because they don't listen with the lord and there we will have everlasting life with the lord no more pain no more crying because he's going to wash the tears in our eyes so brothers and sisters therefore this is what the lord wants us to remember awaken awaken cloth yourself with strength O zion put on your garments of splendor O jerusalem holy city for the uncircumcised and unclean will not again enter in. Isaiah 61.10 I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of righteousness as a groom wear a priestly headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. 
Remember, brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord in Revelation 3 verse 3. He said, Remember then what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know the hour when I will come upon you. Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who remains awake and cloth, so that he will not go naked and let his shame be exposed. Brothers and sisters, we really have to prepare and always be awake and ready for the coming of the Lord. This is the reason why I'm seeing somebody sleeping still covered with blanket. God wants us to wake up and be ready because anytime He's coming. Therefore, brothers and sisters, 2 Timothy 3 verse 14, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from in infancy you have known the Holy Scripture, the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That is also the same in Matthew 24, 14. And brothers and sisters, the Lord said also in Mark 13, verse 10, And the gospel must first be proclaimed in all the nations. Praise be to God before the end comes. And that's the reason why. The Lord revealed the New Jerusalem, showing it, but then the Bible under it, which actually tells that the Bible is the foundation of how it is going to look like. This is where we can see the truth of every vision and every dream the Lord is showing us through the Bible. Refer it to the Bible. And God's words are true. And just like what he said and show in the dream, the Bible is going to fly and it's going to go to the different countries to reveal himself to them. And this is why the Lord left the stage to go to get the last Gentiles. The Lord is preaching his words through his people here on earth revealing himself to all Jews and Gentiles that whoever accept him as their Lord and their Savior will be saved. And once the final Gentile will hear the word, the last person all over the world will hear the words of God, then the end will come. So no one can say, I didn't know it. I'm sorry, Lord, I didn't hear your words. I'm sorry, Lord, nobody tells me. Nobody will say that. Because God made all his resources. He actually made it possible to every individual to hear the gospel and the good news of our salvation. For those who accept Him, they will be saved. And for those who will reject Him, they will receive the wrath intended for them. Brothers and sisters, God is already preparing. The, our, the kingdom is already prepared. We are going to be with the Lord and live with Him for eternity. Imagine how big is that. And we... The children of God is going to dwell with Him forever and ever in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. God bless you in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen.